Arguing with narcissists is pointless, exhausting, and confusing, but most narcissists are really good at saying just the right things to keep you engaged, to keep you coming back, keep trying to communicate, keep trying to resolve this argument. They're really good at roping you in to staying emotionally invested in this exhausting, pointless endeavor. But I think that when you can really understand why this argument is actually happening and why the narcissist is actually saying the things they're saying, that can help you untangle yourself from this web that they've got you trapped in. And that's what I hope to do in today's video as I explain why it is that narcissists like to argue. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. Now in this video, I'm going to go over seven specific reasons that narcissists like to argue. And to preface those reasons, I want to explain that narcissists don't experience arguments the same way most of us probably do. I think for most of us, we're uncomfortable arguing with somebody who's important to us, somebody that we have a personal relationship with. Most of us don't enjoy uh, angry fights and arguments with people that we love. We try to resolve them. It's, it's distressing. It's upsetting for most of us. But for a narcissist, they don't experience it that way. They don't really care about people the same way most people do. It doesn't bother them that an argument or a fight is hurting you or damaging the relationship. They're not even thinking about that. They're, they are always only thinking about how anything is serving them or making them look or making them feel. So it doesn't bother them to get into these ugly, endless, angry fights that go nowhere like it does for most of us. So that doesn't deter them the way it, it does most of us. Most of us are deterred by this. We're, we are deterred by the way that we value the relationship and also by the way that we don't wanna hurt people that we care about. So that, that helps us keep these arguments under control when we're dealing with other normal people. But narcissists don't care about this. They do not mind keeping an, an argument going for hours or weeks or months or even years because of what they get out of that argument. Arguing makes them feel better most of the time, not worse like it does for most of us. Arguing is almost therapeutic in a really unhealthy way for narcissists. And that's why these arguments can just go on forever as they drain us, as they destroy our spirit, destroy the relationship. They are boosting the narcissist's ego or just sense of power or things that the narcissist is struggling with. They're this really unhealthy coping mechanism for them. And I'm going to explain in seven specific ways why this is so. Number one, narcissists are uncomfortable when things are going well. For most of us, when we're having a nice quiet evening in and everybody's happy and there's peace and harmony in the home or wherever we are, that's a pleasant experience. That's what we want. We, we would like to have that every day, right? But for a narcissist, when things are going well, when everybody's being pleasant, um, when you are doing nice things for them or saying nice things, there's this sense of unease because narcissists don't trust you. They don't trust the relationship. They don't trust anything that seems to be stable, loving, trustworthy, they feel like somebody's trying to trick them or something's gonna go wrong any minute or you don't really mean those nice things you say, you're just pretending, you're just manipulating them the way that they would be manipulating you. And it really makes them feel like something's gonna go wrong any minute here, something's wrong, I can't trust this, but what's gonna happen? So when they're in this zone, it's just like this tension. Like, I know that this person doesn't really care about me. They're just being nice to try to uh, trick me into putting my guard down. Or I know that things aren't really going as well as I think they are. So it actually is a relief to them if an argument breaks out. 
And this is why sometimes they will start an argument out of nothing just to break that tension and just to validate themselves so that they can prove to themselves, oh, I knew that things weren't that great. I knew that this person was really plotting against me and was really going to start yelling at me all night. I knew I couldn't really trust any of this. And if they are the one that starts that problem, that starts the argument, they have control over it. They don't have to just sit there and wait for you to do something or for outside circumstances to ruin everything. Now they've got control over it, not somebody else. So that's one reason that narcissists will start arguments so that they can keep control over what they know is already gonna happen. Like, let's just get it over with. The second reason that narcissists like to argue is that it gives them a sense of control over your emotions, you know, especially if they're able to rile you up. There is nothing more soothing to them than to have control over another person's behavior or actions or emotions. So, you know, if they can just push your buttons and start you arguing, they've got control over you. You're like a puppet and that just makes them feel good about themselves. It also lends credibility to whatever it is they're saying. When you are arguing back with somebody, it even if you're trying to tell them how wrong they are or how baseless they are, their argument is, you're still you're lending them credibility. You're saying that even though I don't agree with you, what you're saying has enough merit to it that it's worth my time and energy arguing about it. And I've used this analogy like a million times, but if a three-year-old calls you a poo-poo head, you're not gonna sit there and spend two or three hours trying to explain to this three-year-old that you're not a poo-poo head. You're, you're not going to devote all that time and energy into this argument because it's not worth it, because it's just a silly, baseless, ridiculous thing that a little tiny child is saying, a little child that has no idea what they're talking about. And if you viewed a narcissist's ridiculous, um, equally immature, baseless insults that way, you wouldn't spend all this time and energy arguing with the ridiculous things they say. And when you do devote time and energy to it, you are lending merit to what they're saying. And that makes them feel important and relevant. So being able to get you worked up, being able to get you to devote your time and energy into arguing with them makes them feel like they have control over you and that they are powerful and important enough for you to spend all your time and energy arguing with. The third reason that a narcissist might want to argue with you is that they are punishing you for something. And this can often be for something that you don't even know about. And I want to share a personal story here. I, I usually try not to get too personal on this channel. Um, I really don't think it's a good idea to call specific people out on a public forum and accuse them of being narcissists. So I really try to shy away from that. But I don't really know how to tell this story without getting a little bit personal. So I don't know. Here we go. So years ago, um, I was in my late 20s. I was part of a family for a few years. And this was probably my third or fourth Christmas with this family. The patriarch of this family was in his early 70s, I think. And I was in my late 20s. And there were probably 10 to 15 people gathered together for this Christmas Eve family party. And we were all having a good time as far as I could tell, you know, it was just a nice Christmas party. And you know, we're sitting around talking and it was a few hours into the night. I don't remember what brought it up, but somebody started talking about chickens for some reason. And I grew up with chickens, so I knew a little bit about chickens. <laughs> and so, for some reason we were talking about the term chicken, you know, to call somebody a chicken. And I said, oh yeah, we call people chicken because chickens will pick on weaker chickens. When there's a, a chicken who is sick or weak, all the other chickens will gang up on that chicken and peck it, peck it to death if nobody intervenes, seemingly just because they can. So chickens will pick on chickens that are weaker than them just because they're bullies. And that's part of where this term chicken came from. And so this old man, just 
just out of the blue, he wasn't even really part of this conversation. He was just sitting on the couch. He said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Just like that. And I was, I was stunned. I was hurt. I was confused. And I started trying to defend myself, you know, trying to explain, like, well, I grew up with chickens. I mean, I've seen this. I, and I was trying to understand, like, why, why do you think what I said was dumb? And he just kept doubling down on this and telling me I don't know what I'm talking about and, you know, what a dumb thing to say. And I I was just, I you know, I eventually just started crying, you know. And then his wife, the matriarch of the family, she started crying too because this was probably the 53rd jillionth Christmas that he had ruined for her. And of course, nobody intervened, especially the one person that was with me that probably should have stood up for me, which I have a whole video on um, narcissists don't have your back. And this is a really good example of that. Anyway, sometime later, and I honestly can't remember who told me this or how I found this out, but somebody told me a little later that he had told them that what actually happened was earlier in the night, like an hour or two earlier in the night, I had been having a conversation with somebody else and he had just overheard this conversation I was having and I said something about um, quitting my job and I don't need to go into the details, but what I was saying was there was this specific thing about my job that I wanted to change and I said, if I couldn't change it, then I would quit my job. And for some reason that really offended him that I would have the nerve to think I could quit my job. I, I don't know, like it doesn't even make sense why that would offend him, but I guess he sat there for the rest of the night stewing over my audacity to think I could quit a job. And then he found an opportunity to humiliate me in front of everybody because he was angry about something I had said a couple hours earlier. And here I was thinking that he thought my comment about chickens was stupid. Here I was trying to defend my knowledge of chickens and trying to understand what was so stupid about what I had said when that had nothing to do with why he was starting this argument. And I think this is really typical of narcissists. And like, I don't know if this guy was a narcissist, but this was a very narcissistic thing to do. And it's really common for a lot of us when we get caught in these arguments, trying to defend ourselves, you know, trying to defend our chicken knowledge, not realizing that that has nothing to do with this hurtful comment that's come out of nowhere. And you're barking up the wrong tree if you think that defending your chicken knowledge is going to solve this argument because it has nothing to do with it. And if you really dig deeper, if you peel the layers of this onion back, it's like, why did he feel uh, so angry about my comment anyway? Like, what business is it of his that I might decide to quit my job? You, you could peel the onion back further and further where no reason that a narcissist picks an argument or feels entitled to ruin everybody's Christmas is really going to make any sense, no matter how many layers deep you go. It's just all about them. It's just all about getting revenge on people that have offended them for no good reason. And it's all about having all the attention on them. It's about having the power to just stop a Christmas party in its tracks and um, have the ability to just say something that would cause everybody to suddenly freeze in awkward silence. The fourth reason that narcissists like to argue is that it distracts you from what's really going on. If they can keep you roped up in this endless, pointless task of trying to defend yourself from things that they're not actually concerned about, you're not going to be paying attention to what they're doing. You're not going to be thinking about how unfair they're being, or um, maybe you're not going to be wondering so much about what they're up to or why they're doing or saying certain things because you're just so concentrated on these insults they've hurled at you or the emotional um, chaos, the emotional tornado whirlpool of this argument that you're trapped in, how offended you are, how insulted you've been and how you're just so caught up trying to explain yourself, trying to clear up this misunderstanding, you know, trying to explain how many years you spent watching chickens peck each other to death. 
And when you're trying to defend yourself, you know, when you're trying to convince somebody, I'm not lying, or I really do care about you, or I'm not lazy, or I really am trying my best, and you're just working so hard to try to prove yourself to somebody, it's, it's that those tables are flipped, and you're not looking at like, wait a minute, you're the one who's being lazy, you're the one who doesn't care about this relationship, you're the one that's lying all the time, and here I am trying to prove that I'm not doing those things. I'm so wrapped up in, in that that I can't even see that you're the one doing all those things. So it's like, if you're spending hours pulling up data and pie charts and Google Googling articles about the right way to make a baked potato, you're not thinking about like, wait, why did it take you three hours to go buy some milk from the grocery store? The fifth reason that narcissists like to argue is they are bored. Narcissists are chronically being eaten alive from the inside out with boredom. And part of this is they want something to distract them. I mean, they're trying to distract you from what they're doing, right? But they're also trying to distract themselves from these voices that are constantly harassing them and torturing them, tormenting them 24 seven. They are constantly battling with these feelings and these internal voices telling them how worthless and horrible they are and how nobody cares about them and everybody's going to betray them and nothing they've done has ever been good enough. And they're constantly trying to drown all that out. That's why they can be so over the top with trying to overcompensate. That's why they try to make themselves up to be perfect and brilliant and amazing because they're trying to drown out those voices that are telling them how worthless and shameful they are. And so part of that can present itself as boredom because they're always looking for something to distract them from how they really feel about themselves. And arguments are great for that. If they can cause chaos and drama and they can start a five hour argument over how to sharpen a pencil, that is a wonderful distraction from the things that are constantly going on in their head from the ugly venom that they are constantly spewing at themselves. And they don't care if it hurts you. They don't care if it hurts the relationship because it's just this nice, relieving, soothing kind of coping mechanism for them. And if they can convince themselves that you deserve it, they're not going to feel any, any guilt. You know, if they are really angry at you for daring to make some comment about quitting your job and they've worked that up in their head to convince themselves that you are a lazy, selfish, entitled little brat, then why should they feel bad that they've ruined your whole night arguing about how to sharpen a pencil? You deserve that. And now they don't have to sit and think about how they really feel about themselves. The sixth reason that narcissists like to argue is it's a way for them to make you out to be the crazy person or the angry person. There's this whole phenomenon called projective identification that I did a video on early on when I had this YouTube channel. But narcissists will do this thing where they will feel an emotion or they will uh, recognize a trait within themselves that they don't like. So they will cause somebody else to exhibit that trait so they can convince themselves that that person is actually the one who is an angry person or a stupid person or whatever it is that they're trying to offload. So narcissists will pick fights and push your buttons and insult you and say just the right things to get you riled up so that you will get angry so that they can look at you and say, ah, this is the person with the anger problem, not me. This is the person who can't control themselves, not me. And even if they're not doing this in order to convince themselves that it's not them who has these traits, um, they could be doing it just to be able to show other people, like, look how unhinged this person is. They're obviously the one with the problem, not me. Look at what I have to put up with here. And this is a really effective way to confuse outside people so that people on the outside can't see who it is that's really controlling the dynamics in this relationship. 
and who it is that's really causing this behavior. Even though we all have to take responsibility for our own behavior, even in this kind of uh, situation. Still though, it's not easy to do that especially when you don't understand why somebody's pushing your buttons, you know, especially when you don't understand that this person's insulting you because they want to rile you up. It's not really because they think your comment about chickens was stupid. It's because they want to make you look like the one with an emotional problem. And the seventh reason that narcissists like to fight is they're just angry. I mean, for a lot of them, they're just really pissed off about everything and they want to fight about it. It's really that simple. Narcissists are really angry all the time over everything because they feel pathologically entitled to absolutely anything and everything they want and they don't care about how you feel or how any of that affects you. And so they have no problem starting arguments and just venting and using you as some kind of emotional punching bag or emotional toilet. It's therapeutic. It's cathartic for them to just sit and rant and rave and scream and complain about the way you tie your shoes and how terrible you are and to pretend that all this anger inside of them is your fault because you won't let them borrow your car or you won't pay their electric bill for them or whatever it is. You know, it's just it's just that simple. Narcissists are really angry because they really feel like the whole world owes them everything they want. How dare you sit, tell them no? How dare you put boundaries up? How dare you put your needs ahead of theirs? Because the whole world exists solely for and because of them. The whole world is their oyster. Anything you have, your time, your money, your resources, is only good if they can use it. What good is it if you are putting up boundaries for yourself if it takes away from what they want. So narcissists are angry all the time because the world doesn't cooperate with this narrative. This is really frustrating for them. The real world doesn't always fall in line with the fantasy of what they think they are owed. And so they need a way to vent this frustration. They wanna argue about it or about anything else that gives them an outlet for this rage and anger that they're always feeling. And you know, they don't always know why they're angry. They just know that they're angry. They know that the whole world has wronged them, that they are the victim of everything they have caused. And somebody's gonna have to pay for that. And if you're the closest person and, and they can convince you to argue with them for three hours over nothing, they're gonna do it. And that's gonna make them feel a lot better when it's done, even if it completely destroys you. Why should that matter to them when the only reason you exist is to make them feel better and to serve their needs in whatever way you're able to do that? Now, a lot of you might wonder, what am I supposed to do? You know, because you can't stop a narcissist from doing any of this. You know, you might want advice on how to get the narcissist to stop picking fights or how to get the narcissist to admit that your comment about chickens isn't stupid. You can't do that. You have no control over any of these things. You cannot force somebody to be reasonable. You cannot fix somebody else's emotional problems. That's what they expect you to be able to do. That's where all these problems come from in the first place is they're blaming problems on you that you can't do anything about. So all you can do is understand and realize that none of this has anything to do with you and that these arguments are pointless. They are exhausting, they are endless, and you will get nothing out of them. So with the example of the Christmas Eve chicken comment, when the old man said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, what I really should have said, and of course I, did not have the wherewithal or the maturity or the knowledge to have any idea that this is what I should have said. But what I should have said is something like, oh, okay. And just pretty much kind of ignored him and brushed it off. That's what I really should have done. But of course I didn't understand that that comment was only meant to hurt me. That he didn't really care about my chicken comment. He was trying to humiliate me. He was trying to ruin Christmas. And I let him do that because, I mean, I didn't know any better. But that was the whole purpose. And if I had understood that at the time, I wouldn't have given it any credence. I wouldn't have legitimized that comment by arguing with it 
and eventually crying about it in front of everybody. When I talk about the three-year-old giving you a three-year-old insult, that's an important image to keep in your head. Narcissists, while they are full-grown adults, they have the maturity of a three to five-year-old child and their insults and their provocations and their arguments hold just as much merit. The further you peel these onions back, the, the more meaninglessness you're going to see. There is nothing worth your time in these arguments. And the best thing you can do is to refuse to engage in them, refuse to give them legitimacy, refuse to internalize them, and, and refuse to let this person make you think that there actually is something wrong with what you've said, or your comment actually was really stupid and now you have to defend yourself not to let yourself get caught up in pointless arguments. So to make a long story short, I mean, the best thing you can do is to remove yourself from these types of relationships. Just don't hang out with these kind of people, cut them out of your life. I know that's not always possible. And in some certain situations, depending on the details, sometimes it's not always worth cutting the relationship off completely, but if you can't do that, then the best you can do is just, like I said, don't engage. I mean, one really powerful thing that you can do that is very counterintuitive is just to agree with whatever they say. Like if somebody says something like, you don't even care about me. If you're really to that point in the relationship, you could just say, yeah, you're right, I don't. Or you never listen. Yeah, I guess not. You know, like you're talking to a three-year-old. You know, if a three-year-old says, you you never give me anything I want, you're so mean. What do a lot of adults say back? They might say something like, yeah, I know I'm really mean. It's kind of the same thing. You don't engage an emotionally immature person in an argument when you really understand how baseless and meaningless the argument is and how it really has nothing to do with you. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks. Bye.